until the morning light. There is a haven for the weary soul to run to. When you're tired of all the guilt and all the shame, there is a Savior and His open arms are waiting. There is a haven and Jesus is His name. There is a haven of comfort for God's children. You can find it when you speak his name in prayer. He'll give you rest then from all your cares and labors. There is a haven and the Lord will lead you there. There is a haven for the weary soul to run to. When you're tired of all the guilt and all the shame, there is a Savior and his open arms are waiting. There is a haven, and Jesus is his name. Tonight, take your Bible, let's go to Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter number 33. The Lord put this on my heart this afternoon. And uh, as we was praying, and uh, sometimes whenever the Lord gives me something, the service goes exactly that way. But I'll be honest, tonight it's the complete opposite. And I don't know why it's that way sometimes, but I know sometimes it is. But I know this is what God's placed on my heart tonight. So if you will pray for us, I need the Lord. I, I'm, I'm not a very smart man, and uh, I don't know a lot of things. So you, I just need the power of the Holy Ghost to help me tonight. Amen. Ezekiel chapter number 33. We'll begin our reading in verse number 1. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of thy people, and say unto them, When I bring the sword upon a land, if the people of the land take a man of their coasts and set him for their watchman, if when he seeth the sword come upon the land, it's talking about the watchman, he blow the trumpet and warn the people, then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet and taketh not warning, if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet, and took not warning. His blood shall be upon him. But he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. But if the watchman seeth the sword come, and blow not the trumpet, the people be not warned. If the sword come, and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity. But his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. That's all I feel like reading tonight. And uh, as I was praying this afternoon, I felt like this is what God had put on my heart. And uh, like I say, I'm not a very smart man, but uh, I'm just a simple-minded, uh, simple-minded man. So you pray for us. Uh, I've just got a few things on my heart tonight. But uh, as I was thinking about this verse number six, it's talking about the watchman here. And, uh, but this time, uh, the watchman saw the sword coming and he didn't blow the trumpet. And uh, my mind automatically went to the time we're living in. 
There's people that will get behind the pulpit and they'll, uh, they'll preach or they'll do whatever they'll teach or whatever, read poems, uh, try to make you feel good, but there's no warnings. And uh, there's a heaven to gain and there's a hell to shun. And uh, below, I know uh, Dale, Dale preached on hell this morning, uh, but I feel it so strong on my heart again tonight. Uh, but underneath our feet right now is a pit of hell and uh, made for the devil and his angels. Uh, but because of what happened in the beginning, uh, you know the whole story. And uh, without the blood of Jesus, we can't make it. But uh, as my job, as Brother Brandon's job, as Brother Dale's job to stand behind the pulpit, I guess you could say we're the watchmen. And uh, if it's okay, I want to pin some roses on Brother Dale for being the watchman over this church. Because I've been in a lot of churches in my past life, or not in, my, in my past, uh, where people would get up and tell you all these things, tell you you could live however you want to and be alright. They didn't have any standards about them. Uh, when I come here, it was different. I didn't know what in the world to expect I didn't really know what power was in a church uh, but because of Brother Dale's standards because of the watchman because of the warnings that he's given out uh, he stood firm and I want to thank the Lord for my pastor tonight uh, for the watchman that he's been but not only do I want to talk about him being the watchman uh, here in verse number 3 it says if when he seeth the sword come upon the land he blew the trumpet like I said talking about the watchman he blew the trumpet and he warned the, warned the people at this point. Verse number 4 says, Then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet, and taketh not warning, if the sword come and take him away, his blood, talking about you, the one that heard it, shall be upon his own head. Uh, Brother Dale and me and Brother Brandon can stand up here and preach until we're out of breath, uh, preach until we have no sweat left coming out of our body, and uh, you can do with it whatever you want to do. And if the Lord will help me tonight, like I say I'm not going to be very long I've, I'm just simple minded and uh, I want to preach on what's our excuse there's so many excuses that the devil puts in our life I'll be honest with you uh, before I ever even uh, before I even ever this ever come into my mind I went up to my house and I had to I had to pray and I had to get some things right in my life because I wouldn't dare want to preach this with things in my own life trying to preach to you warnings when I needed the warnings in my own life things that I the devil puts excuses in my mind and uh, I'll be honest with you I was talking to my my wife on the way here this morning uh, on the way to church this morning or uh, whenever I woke up the devil will put it on my mind I'll be honest I really didn't feel all that great and uh, just mentally and physically both and I told my wife I really didn't even feel like coming at, coming at all and uh, see uh, the devil will give you so many excuses in this life but the problem is is we take those excuses and we feel like they're okay the devil will pat you on the back one second and once you fall for it he'll kick you in the he'll kick you in the back when you, uh, when, when he comes and throws those excuses in your life so there's so many excuses excuses in our life uh, that the devil will put in our life. I heard a story of, uh, I was talking to a man I know very well the other day and he had texted me uh, about a church he used to go to and uh, he said, I walked into the store and there was a man that I knew very well that claimed to be a good Christian, that claimed to be a godly person and he said, I could just tell by the look on his face and I could just tell by his countenance that it looked like he could rip the face off of the cashier. He said, just, the, just by his actions. But the church See, like I said, that was a pastor. We've got to be careful. There's people watching us everywhere we go. We've got to be careful. There's so many excuses that the devil can put in our life. He can tell you you're not good enough, so you'll stay at home. He can tell you you don't need to do this, so we do the opposite. It, the, the devil put so many excuses. I feel like sometimes I told my wife on the way over here. Sometimes I feel like I preach the same thing over and over and over. But you know what? I began to realize really the only thing that matters, the only reason we really preach is to preach you the gospel because we need to live right if we want to make it to that blessed land. Mamaw Joyce, if you'll go ahead and come to the piano tonight. That's really all I've got on my heart. Like I said, I, I know it's very, very simple. Uh, that's all I've got on my heart. But what is your excuse tonight? I've had excuses in my own heart and in my own life. Like I said, I even had to get rid of some of them before I come here tonight. But is everyone standing all over the house tonight? I know I'm very, very simple-minded. I know I've been really short, but that's all I feel like saying tonight. 
You and you only know what your excuse is tonight. You're the only one that knows. I don't mean this to be funny tonight, but on my way, I was getting ready for church, and I went into the bathroom, and I was fixing my hair and uh, everything, and uh, I was tucking in my shirt, and my button popped off. But you wouldn't know it by looking at me, because I've got it covered with my belt. There's so many things that we can come into it, that can come into our life. And Brother Dale may not know it. Nobody else in here may know it. But you can come in here and put on a good front. You can act like everything's okay and just put a cover on it. And now act like everything's okay, but it's really not. There's things deep down in your heart that are not right. But you're trying to cover it over. But God sees it. God does not turn a blind eye to it. Sin is sin. And it's going to send you to hell. That's all I've got on my heart tonight, Brother Dale.